All right, there's two really, really good new features in Google Classroom that we wanted to show you. One of the ones has been a requested one for a long time. Um, you've always been able to individually assign work and classwork to e each student. However, differentiating a lesson that way takes a lot of time if you're having to pick out each student every time. What you now have the ability to do when you create an assignment is instead of using the drop down to select all students or specific students, you can now select also groups. And you can see I have two groups with four students set up in them that I can just select to assign that assignment to. So how do you set up those groups and how many can you have? You can have as many as you want. I would make sure you choose names that are descriptive enough so you know which group of students you're assigning something to. But to create them, it's super simple. When you're on the class and you're, it doesn't matter whether you're in the stream or the classwork or the people page, actually it does, you gotta go to the people page. Down here at the bottom, it says students and now you have groups. You just click the groups tab and then you can click create group, give it a name and select the students that you want to be in that group. And that's how simple it is. So you can create as many groups as you want to differentiate any classroom, Google classroom lesson you want um, by reading level, by ability level, the second new Google Classroom feature that I wanted to share with you is um, revolving around the Guardian Access. Guardian Access has always been there. You, you can send or turn this on for each of your classes in the class settings, and it will send the parents either a daily or weekly email explaining what to do in the class and when it's due in a brief description. What they've now done to enhance that feature is they've now got a web page that goes with the Guardian email. So at any point in time, a parent can pop over there and see the web page. Unfortunately, it's not easy for teachers to see because you need to be an invited and accepted guardian of a student in order to see that page. If you could try to go to it and you're not, you get an error message. But what I've got for you, and I'm gonna show you right now, is a screen that it looks like it. It's the, it, well actually it's the actual screen, but what it looks like from a parent's perspective is mostly this classwork tab right here. And they can click on an assignment to see a little bit of details about it. So we previously told you how to do a screenshot on a Chromebook. And this is really super important for high school teachers where that's your only device now. And there's simply a key on the top of the keyboard that allows you to enter that screen capture mode. However, a lot of teachers are leaving their Chromebooks closed up and using the wireless keyboard. So how do you do a screen capture without having to open up your Chromebook every time? Really super simple. You just click down here in the system tray where the clock is. And then you'll see screen capture is here. And when you click that, it brings you to the same tool. It doesn't matter how many screens you have, they will all go to a light gray. And then all you have to do is click and hold your mouse to drag and select a section of any of those screens. And then click capture and it'll capture that portion of the screen to a file which it downloads and puts into your downloads folders. So you can see that um, by using the files app, which is this one here. And it's coming up on a different screen. Let me drag it over here. So it puts it in that downloads folder and then you can take that screenshot and drive it and drag it to any folder in your Google Drive and keep it, add it to documents, add it to slideshows, et cetera. So really, again, all you have to do is click down here by the clock, choose screen capture. When the screen dims, you can take that little box and capture any portion of the screen you want and click capture. You also get this little toolbar here, which allows you to record a video instead of a still picture. And then there's buttons here that say uh, the whole screen, a window or a portion of a screen. So that's using screen capture on a Chromebook without having to be able to touch the keyboard. This isn't really a new tip, but it is important because we are on a countdown clock now. This is the new version of Infinite Campus. So for instance, you don't see grades over here. You can't click on grades and get to your grade book. Um, to toggle this new version on and off, you simply go up here to your icon in the corner and you can say, try new look on off. 
Um, what we really strongly suggest is that you start trying the new look and working through things. And if you get frustrated, then you can go back to the old look to do something because starting next school year, the new look is going to be the only option for you via infinite campus. That's an infinite campus decision, not a Shen decision. But for instance, over you used to go over here to grades to get to the grade book and now the grades menu doesn't have anything but the grades report in it. To get to the grade book, you click on the class and then click on the grades tab up here and it takes you to that very same grade book. So this hasn't changed at all. Just how you get to it has changed. So please play with the new interface and try it out because you're on a clock till next September to get used to it. So you might as well do it when it's a little bit lower pressure than when you have to do something. So turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off as you need to experiment with the new version. As most of you are aware, Jamboard is being discontinued and it will no longer be available as of October. And a lot of teachers have asked us what they could use as an alternative. In this video, I'd like to suggest that you try Canva as an alternative to Jamboard. First thing I love about Canva is that you can search Canva for basically any sort of graphic or presentation that you would like to. So. In the example I'm going to show you today, in the search of Canva, I searched mind map. So I came up with this um, background through Canva. And if you wanted the kids to collaborate and share great ideas from a lesson, it's fairly simple. You can come up here to the right hand side and click share. You can hit assignment. You can select Google Classroom. And you'll have three options, very similar to Google Classroom a new design for each student where it copies each student their own slide presentation, instructions only where they can only read what's presented to them, or finally work on the design. This is when all 25 of your students in your class would be collaborating on the same document. I would pick that if I was gonna do a jam on a lesson and you'd hit publish and it would walk you through the steps to assign it to your Google Classroom. What I love about Canva is that once students open this um, via Google Classroom, they have the left-hand side to interact with and collaborate together. So for this lesson, my idea was to come to Elements here and have the students pick Post-it. Once they select a Post-it note, they can add all sorts of text. Um, one thing I would suggest is that the first thing students do is add their name to whatever you have them add to a Canva presentation because unlike Jamboard at this current time, there is no version history in Canva. So you do have to be very diligent about what the kids are writing, um, but every student could add a slide and their thoughts are great ideas and they could jam together very much like a Jamboard. There is a text feature and there is also an annotation feature. So kids could highlight, use a pen or a, use a marker or a pen to mark up whatever your slide is on. Um, another one that I was able to look through via Canvas, Canvas, same thing, if you're reading a book, if the students were reading an independent reading novel, one of the things they had in their library was My Character Strengths. So they had all of the kids' pictures on it and the kid could write, insert a text box and add a strength of their character. And then they could really just manipulate it, move it around and bring it to their picture. I thought that was really clever. So again, and just wanted to let you know that you can start to use Canva as a replacement for Jamboard. The only downfall being that it does not have a version history. 